And my second presentation is on ductal carcinoma in situ, whether we are over-treating or under-treating ductal carcinoma in situ, which is DCIS. Basically, breast cancer is divided into invasive and non-invasive types. In DCIS, because it has not invaded the basement membrane and the cancer cells are within the ducts, um, prognosis is very good with almost 100% survival. Um, however, this is only detected on screening mammography, 80% of the time detected on screening mammography. The other 20%, the women can present with a breast lump or with nipple discharge. Now, on the mammogram screening, it usually presents as extensive microcalcification. So if the DCIS is very extensive, and uh, this can also be confirmed on MRI as well, then a mastectomy is needed. So some women will say, I don't have cancer, I don't have a lump, why do I need a mastectomy? So this comes to the fact that does DCIS progress to cancer? Are we over-treating DCIS with a mastectomy? Because we do not know what percentage of DCIS will progress to cancer. In literature, it's been said that 30 to 60% of DCIS will become invasive. Right now, the research, current research in DCIS is actually trying to identify the group that would progress to invasion using gene arrays. Currently, we only use the grade of the DCIS to determine the risk of progression. Because DCIS is also graded 1 to 3, with 3 being high grade and more likely to progress to cancer. So um, the other problem with DCIS is that when it's diagnosed on core needle biopsy, which shows DCIS, 25% of this so-called DCIS can be upgraded or upstaged to invasive duct carcinoma after you excise the whole thing and the whole lump is sent for examination. So there could be areas of uh, invasion that was not seen on the biopsy. So this is quite a high rate of upgrade. So if we say do not treat because it is not going to progress, you will miss some that may already have cancer. The other problem with DCIS, especially the non-palpable ones, is that after you do a wire-guided local excision, one in three actually were found to have involved margins and needed re-operation. So we have to actually warn the women, especially in the non-palpable DCIS that is found on routine screening, that there is a one in three chance that the margins are involved and you would need further surgery. So a discussion between the woman and the um, or surgeon is quite important because if they do not want to take a risk of further surgery, they might opt for a mastectomy together with an immediate reconstruction, which is the standard treatment of a fairly extensive DCIS. Now, lumpectomy is also suitable. Lumpectomy has to be a very localized DCIS with clear margins and then um, we give external beam irradiation. Okay. Now, the treatment of the axilla in DCIS is also controversial. Because of this 25% risk of upgrade to invasive breast cancer, usually we would do a sentinel lymph node biopsy where we remove only one or two lymph nodes to determine that there is no spread of cancer to the lymph nodes. Because even in DCIS, in some of my patients, very rarely, they say about 1%, you can get involvement of lymph nodes even when the pathology is DCIS because there could be some invasion that is not picked up on the pathology specimen. Okay, so, and the other thing is the role of tamoxifen. DCIS can also be estrogen receptor positive or negative. If the ER is positive, then tamoxifen can be used for five years, same as for invasive breast carcino uh, cancer. Um, but because the prognosis is so good, um, there are some women who would not actually require tamoxifen, especially the very low-risk DCIS, which are ER positive. So it's a discussion between the oncologist and the patient about the risks and benefits of tamoxifen. I find that about 50% of women actually choose not to take tamoxifen because the, they will find that the risks of taking tamoxifen are not worth the benefit. So the next question is, do all DCIS need surgery? There is now a trial called the LORIS trial, which was started in UK in 2014, which randomizes which plans to randomize about 900 women to either surgery or active surveillance, which means yearly mammogram. Now, this is slowly uh, uh, recruiting, 
But it is not easy to recruit because if you're a woman with DCIS, a lot of women will say it's like a time bomb. Of course, most of them would want it out rather than just do active surveillance. The outcome of this trial is to look at the 10-year um, survival or the 10-year outcome in terms of local recurrence or progression to invasive uh, breast cancer. So this trial may prove that we are over-treating DCIS by surgery. You know, but this trial only involves women with a low risk DCIS, that means grade 1 and 2. Certainly the grade 3 DCIS will proceed to surgery because the grade 3 DCIS are more likely to progress to invasive uh, duct carcinoma. So in conclusion, over-treating or under-treating DCIS is going to be a discussion, a rather long discussion between the patient and the, womb, and the, on, on the surgeon about the risks and benefits of over-treating or under-treating uh, DCIS. Thank <laughs> you.